over to there. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and a really exciting video because today I get to drive the brand new Audi RS6. In fact, I'm driving this car all the way down to the Black Forest in Germany tonight where I'll spend the next couple of days filming a proper video. So make sure you stay tuned and keep an eye out for that one. Before we start the video, I just want to say a massive shout out and thanks to all of the support and new subscribers I've had in 2020. The channel has been going off, the views have been amazing, and I genuinely can't thank you enough. The more support I get from you guys, the better cars I get, the more content I can produce. While I'm on that note, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. We'll go and have a walk around of this particular car. Before we do that, I just want to point out that this is a launch edition car. So there's only 110 of these being brought to the UK. This retails at about £102,000 on the road. This one is in Navara blue. I absolutely love it. I think it looks gorgeous. There'll be three trim levels of the brand new C8 RS6 here in the UK. Four if you include this launch edition and the base RS6 starts at just over £92,000 on the road. But it does come with a lot of standard equipment. So the base car comes with 21 inch 10 spoke alloys as standard. RS8 style matrix LED lights with laser lights, privacy glass, all wheel steering. So four wheels steer, the rear wheels steer in the opposite direction to the fronts at slower speeds and they steer in the same direction as the fronts at higher speeds. 10 piston front brake calipers on steel discs as standard. This is the base spec car I'm talking about. And those standard discs are 420 millimeters. <laughs> Loads of RS styling, as you'd expect. Oval rear RS exhausts. RS specific bumpers, splitter, rear diffuser, etc. And its own unique power dome bonnet. So this is not your regular bonnet that you find on a normal A6 Avant. Also things like unique RS arches. As you can see, these rear arches especially are massively flared. They look fantastic. And the rear doors obviously have to be completely different to normal A6 rear doors as well because they flare out to meet the arches, which is just lovely. Going inside, you now get the RS mode button on the steering wheel, which is the same button that I had in the RS Q8 that I tested in Tenerife at the end of last year. Essentially gives you your preset RS modes, if you like. So it's a bit like an M button. You press that once, you get RS1, you press it again, you get RS2, and uh, you can have all your preferred settings at the touch of a button. The steering wheel is also flat bottomed. You get RS specific electric heated and ventilated front seats in Valcona perforated leather. Four zone climate control, rear reversing camera, cruise control, a power tailgate and split fold rear seats. So that's all standard on the base RS6 at around 92,000 pounds on the road. But this one being the launch edition, it has, on top of all that standard equipment, 22 inch upgraded wheels that are fitted with winter tires because we're gonna be seeing some snow over the next couple of days. It has the top speed limiter lifted from 155 miles an hour to 174 miles an hour. Although with winters, I'm limited to, I think it's 169 miles an hour. So hopefully we'll get to explore that later tonight on the German Autobahn. This has a black styling pack, so there's lots of black details around the rear diffuser. All the trim is black. The wing mirror caps are black when you get around the front. The canards and the fake inlets <laughs> are black. Yes, there's plenty of fake inlets. But as Matt Watson talks about when he first looked at this car, you can't deny that fake or not, they add so much to the presence and the looks of this absolutely stunning car. I mean, it is just ridiculous. The launch edition also has the upgraded RS braking system. It has black oval exhaust pipes as opposed to silver ones on the stock car. 
and it has the Bang & Olsen 3D sound system, which I'm sure I'm going to experience over the next 12 hours or so. What's under the Power Dome bonnet? Well, it has the familiar 4-litre V8 twin turbo that is in the RS Q8. We're talking 590 brake horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque. This car has a quoted 0 to 62 mile an hour figure of 3.6 seconds. Right, I need to jump in and hit the road because I've got a long journey to take you guys on. So I really hope you enjoy it. join me in the car. I've been on the road just over 40 minutes and first thing to point out is the fact that I've averaged over 30 miles to the gallon. Okay fair enough I've been sitting at around 70 miles an hour on the M25. I'm now on the M20 heading down towards the Euro tunnel but still I think for a car with 600 horsepower <laughs> over 30 miles to the gallon is pretty impressive. Before we talk more about my first impressions, I just want to talk about my new t-shirt that I've got on. It's another control and shift new design we have. What the truck. I'll let you guys uh, figure out what it is, but I think it's quite amusing. Another genius idea by my business partner, John. So well done, mate. I love it. And uh, this is on our website, control and shift. Put a link to that in the description below. Everything else in here, well, it's quite a familiar cabin to be fair. It's it's one of Audi's latest cabins with all of the touchscreen stuff. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of, I think it looks stunning. It's beautiful in here. Everything is beautifully made. All the materials and touch points are spot on, but it's gonna be interesting to see if I actually warm to this touchscreen stuff over the next few days. I've already been cleaning it. I've got a microfiber cloth in the cabin and I've been cleaning my fingerprints as I go. That's my OCD. But it really does show on a sort of diffused day like today, you get loads of shadows and you see all your greasy fingerprints and that does frustrate me a little bit. After spending a lot of time in the M5 competition recently and then the M8 and more recently, my new 7 Series, these seats just aren't as good. They look brilliant. They look really, really good. Um, they kind of fit me. I find that the seats in the bigger RS models, like the RS6 um, and you know S6, that sort of thing, they do fit taller people and people that are over six foot, but I just don't like the ergonomics of them. I don't like the shape of them. Um, I feel like I need to sit back to actually sit in the seat uh, if I sit in my normal driving position, maybe I'm just slightly odd, but with BMW uh, M5 seats, for instance, and the 7 Series seats, this this top section can move in towards your shoulders separately to the rest of the seat, so it really moulds around your body and your back. What's going on today? What am I doing? So this video is a first drive video. I'm doing a proper in-depth review of this car once I get down to some amazing German roads in the Black Forest. But today's journey is gonna take us onto the Euro Tunnel, onto the train, come out in Calais. We're gonna drive through the middle of, well, the sort of eastern middle of France. Uh, we're gonna go through Reims, or Las, as the French pronounce it, I think. Then I'm gonna head back down through the rest of France and I'm gonna cross over into Germany, um, just near the Black Mountains, sort of below Stuttgart, and there's a autobahn there, de-restricted one. So hopefully, with no roadworks, that'll be quite late then. Uh, I should be able to try and do a high-speed run. Okay guys, here we are at the Euro Tunnel. 
I've got a Flexi Plus Pass, which basically allows me to go on to any train at any time. They're far more expensive than your normal tickets, but Audi UK are paying for it, so that's great. Also means you can pick up loads of food. <laughs> I've got about a week's worth of munchies here for the trip, which is great. Um, and an actual Starbucks coffee as well, so here we go. Uh, just about to get on the train. Thank you. So, a little, a little tip to anyone that's taking a big car, supercar, something like this on a train. If you go for the high vehicle carriages, if you like, uh, then the actual uh, track is a lot wider because if you've ever taken a wide car onto the Euro Tunnel before, you know what I'm talking about. It's so hard and they're so narrow normally. So as you can see, I'm having no issues down here because this is designed for like big vans and small trucks and stuff. So too easy. Right, I'm gonna pull up and uh, start planning the route through France. Okay guys, here we are, we've arrived in France. This is Calais. Obviously, first thing you gotta remember when you get over here is <laughs> what side of the road to drive on because on the continent in France and Germany, they drive on the right-hand side of the road. We're gonna push on a bit. Over here, speed limit's a bit better. It's about 85-ish miles an hour. And hopefully, we should just about get to Rachas by the time the sun is setting but the weather is looking pretty grim. I think it's meant to be pretty heavy rain. Great success! The car's been amazing, really has. We've had to drop the speed to 110 kilometers an hour when it rains in France, but up until about 10 minutes ago, I was sitting at a good 130 odd, and my MPG for the trip is still at 28 and a half, um, which is not too bad at all when you consider um, the mixed driving that I've been doing. The actual ride quality of this car is amazing, considering we're on 22 inch wheels, 22 inch wheels. I've just been listening to some of my music on the fantastic Bang & Olsen sound system and I have to say it's really, really good. Super clear, surround sounds just amazing. I mean, these high tech sound systems now are just fantastic. Here we go, through your toll. Is it gonna open? Yay! Into RS mode. I've got it in RS2 now, so it's open the flaps and the exhaust, and it definitely sounds really good if you listen to this. <laughs> it's so savage. And on uh, downshifts, you do get some um, pops out the exhaust. Not really loud ones, because obviously, it's cluttered up with all the uh, relevant filters we need these days, but it's not too bad. All right, let's peel off. I think we just come off here, literally like we're a racing car. We're gonna peel off into the pits. And here we go, look at this. Ah, how cool is this? Really, really, really cool. Right, I'm gonna stop for some pictures, hopefully do a couple of flybys for you guys, and uh, then we really need to hit the road and make our way to Germany.
guys, you join me 725 kilometers into today's journey. Uh, I've been driving for about eight hours, I think. Had some horrible rain, torrential rain for hours and hours and hours, which meant I was sitting at like 100 k's an hour for most of it, so 60 odd miles an hour. So I've got about another two hours to go or so until I get to my hotel. Um, but before that, I'm gonna hit the autobahn if it stays dry, of course, because you can't do any high speed stuff on autobahns in bad weather or in rain, etc., which makes sense. Okay guys, here we are on the German Autobahn. So we just changed down into fourth. So we're doing 150 k's an hour at the moment. That's about 90 miles an hour. Foot on the floor, here we go. completely and utterly effortless bit of wind noise but amazing change down again into fifth down to 200 foot on the floor look at that engine-wise compared to that R8 run that I did in Germany uh, middle of last year where you got the screaming V10 behind you. You can hardly hear this engine actually over the wind noise, which I guess is a bit of a shame, but um, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing car. It feels like it's, you know, it's meant to do this. It is. It's, it's an RS6. It's an Autobahn Cruiser. Amazing, what a car. Right then guys, I am gonna finish this video here. I need to get to my hotel. I'm not gonna get to sleep till way past uh, one o'clock at this rate. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I say, this is literally a first drive video, so please make sure you uh, keep an eye out for my full review that I'll be shooting over the next couple of days out on some proper German roads and hopefully in some really nice weather. So thanks a lot for tuning in. As always, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will see you at the next one. Cheers.